at the end of each podcast episode, I'm going to recommend a podcast that somehow or another ties into this episode. So please listen to the whole episode of the podcast because I guarantee you, the podcast I recommend you're going to love. I'm probably going to get a lot of guys upset about this when I say this, but um, just to give you an idea, as you all know, I'm in the Lions Club, and it seems like once we got more women in the club, we got more things done. And the reason I bring this up, because on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett, you're going to find out about an organization that has been giving grants to organizations such as the ARC, uh, Lassos, Sleep in Heavenly Peace, Habitat for Humanity, so many different organizations. And I can see them doing probably a million dollars in grants in the near future. This is the Women's Given Circle of Harford County that I'm talking about. And when you hear about everything they do, you're going to see why they get things done. Enjoy the conversation. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, they're yeah. free. Yeah. We've been together. Oh, 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 man, you already on. said it. I was going to ask her if she remembered the date. So I'm fortunate enough to be joined here today by Donna Cries and Kim Millot of the Women's Given Circle of Harford County. And I came across them, uh, God, years ago. I don't know if you guys sent me a press release for something you did or if it, I was just going through and found you as, and featured you as nonprofit of the week. But I started looking into everything and the stuff you guys do do is simply amazing so before we get started i want to thank you guys for everything you do um and hopefully i want to get the word out because as with every because you guys are a 501c3 right we are not actually you're not but you are a nonprofit. we are a nonprofit. uh we are not an official 501c3 through the irs okay. uh we actually uh you utilize grapevine as our fiscal sponsor uh, okay. For, for and as well as the community foundation, community foundation is where the uh, giving circle actually started. Ah, okay, okay. But the thing is, I want to get the word out because a lot of people don't know about you as as well as a lot of other, you know, nonprofits and such in the county, which is a shame actually throughout the world if you think about it. Uh, but let's start with Kim. Kim, since you've been with yes. the women's circle longer. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what pulled you towards this organization. So I was born and raised in Harford County, and um, I have a number of friends who are members of the Giving Circle. And so when it started, um, I had my, one of my friends said, you've got to join the Giving Circle. You've got to join the Giving Circle. And so I went to um, a, an informal gathering of women, liked what I heard. Um, and decided to join. And coincidentally, that's kind of the way a lot of our members come to us. It's sort right. of by word of mouth. It's that old commercial, you tell a friend and they'll tell a friend. Um, so um, that's that's what brought me to the circle. And um, I came because I believe in the mission. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in giving back to my community. And I can't give forty or $50,000 a year to charity, unfortunately, but I can join together with a bunch of my friends and do that. So that's what, what brought me here. What is the mission? Um, to, um, oh, geez, <laughs> he had me on guard, too. I thought that was an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we you guys are going to say bad things about me to Monica now, aren't you? <laughs> uh, we engage women of all ages in the power of community philanthropy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you'd be able to pull back from that kid. <laughs> I know. I've said it like a million times. Uh, I, I'm afraid to ask you this next question, then, because if you forget this, then we're really in trouble. You said a friend <laughs> pulled you into it. Who was that friend? Denise sells back. Okay. And she stole them. <laughs> she's and she's really? and her 
and her daughter's a member, and her daughter's a member as well. So we've got a mother oh, wow. daughter duo members. Hmm? And, and Donna, how long have you been with them again? Uh, so since uh, 2019. And what pulled you in? Uh, again, a friend. Uh, so April Ishak, uh, you know, connected and said, hey, you need to check out this uh, Women's Giving Circle. And I went to one of their open houses at Libertories, uh, met the members. And before I knew it, I was treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> they, they threw you right into the fire. They did. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still with them. Yes. <laughs> All right, what are we doing wrong? Because my club, we've done that a lot, and they peep, they tend to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to ask the right person that can't say no, right? <laughs> oh, that's that's true. That's true. So, so how many women total are actually in the women's giving circle? We we currently have 109 members, and that's as really this year. Yep. Wow. And is this something that anybody or? Let me rephrase that. That any women can join, or do they have to be invited? No, any. We welcome anybody. We are. Any, well, but just women, right? Any woman. Yeah. Right. But we will take donations from men. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> we are equal opportunity as far as accepting uh, any sort of money. <laughs> Right. So we'll take a donation from men or corporations or other entities, but only women can be members. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Um, you threw me off there on that one. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, so with with the uh, Women's Given Circle, how often do you guys actually meet? Uh, it varies, uh, you know, right. definitely over the last two years with COVID, it's been a struggle. Uh, we've done a lot yeah. of Zoom calls and whatnot. Uh, you know, typically uh, from a membership standpoint, uh, we have an annual membership meeting in the May time period where we actually get together and overview all of the potential grantees and our members vote on the grantees. Uh, so that's the May time period. And then uh, following that, once we've awarded the grantees, we actually have a September membership meeting uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, those grantees are invited to showcase what they do. And it's really an open house that's actually open to everybody, not just members. Um, we also have a holiday a happy hour. But um, throughout the year, we have a membership um, and outreach committee, uh, Donna Cahoe, uh, as well as Allison Cooney are actually the, the uh, co-chairs uh, for that committee right now. And they're busy planning uh, a variety of events, you know, say four or five events throughout the year uh, to get everyone together. And, and, you know, a lot of that's focused on prospective members uh, bringing in our grantees to talk about the impact of the dollars that you know, have made for their organization. Because I think it's important to tie in, you know, the, you know, the, the importance of the dollars that our mm -hmm. membership go towards and what that impact is. So for those that are listening that don't understand what a grantee is, can you explain that to them? Uh, so a grantee is an an, an organization. It's, it has to be a 501c3 within Harford. Actually, the 501c3 doesn't, doesn't have to be in Harford County, but they have to serve women, family, and children in Harford right. County. And so, uh, you know, from a grant uh, process, we're actually just kicking off our grant process. So Right now, if you look on our website, uh, you know, the grantee portion of our website, our application uh, is available for any of those organizations that meet that mm -hmm. criteria to go ahead and apply and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, submit their uh, grant application. And so that uh, grant application is due, let me check my cheat note, uh, March 11th at noon hey. here. Hey, you guys have awarded some grants to some great nonprofits. Can you name some of them? Yes. Uh, so let me look and see. Uh, so the one organization, uh, Feel Your Boobies, uh, you know, you know around, Wait, what? Feel Your Boobies, right? Uh, it's, it's around breast cancer awareness. Well, I figured it might. Obviously, yeah. I'd never heard of them. Where are they located at? I don't know the answer to that. I was just coming online uh, when, uh, you know, the, they were one of the grantees that was at the open house in September. Kim, do you know where they're out of? Financial? Yeah, actually, they're a national organization. And this was for a new chapter that was just starting out in Hereford County. And they were primarily doing their outreach um, to students at Hereford Community College. Really? Oh, yeah, it was, a, it was all about education and awareness. 
Yeah. So what's really interesting is that if you ask any of the members, like they'll tell you like what are their, you know, what were their favorite grants or what were some of the favorite grantees. And um, I think what's sort of special about us is that we, you know, we're giving to some of these smaller nonprofits that maybe people haven't heard about that, um, you know, and so I think our, um, our awards really make a difference because they're doing things like, if you ever heard of Jam Squad, they're an organization, they're um, bicycle, um, they're a bicycle club, but they also have a charitable arm where they um, repair and refurbish bicycles and give them um, out to um, to kids and adults. And so really? we um, awarded funds to them. Yeah, actually, if you see their trailer, if you see their trailer around town, um, our some one of our grants went to um, assist them with the purchase of that trailer. Oh, wow. No, I never heard of them either. Right. Yeah, uh, they're, they're really great. Yes, I mean, they're, I mean, of, they're all really great. <laughs> that's one of the things that surprises. I know with Harford County, I think there's, what, over 700 nonprofits or something like that? Yes. Yeah, I know, that, but, of course, that includes churches and everything. But every I'm always finding out about, you know, new ones. Unfortunately, I'm also finding mm -hmm. out about some good ones that have shut down. But, uh right. It's it's amazing because you guys have also, correct me if I'm wrong, like uh, have given to the Boys and Girls Club, right? Yes. Um, yep. And I know one that I am dying to get on my podcast, the Miracle League. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, that was uh, you know, uh, our newest grantee, actually. Uh, so we just uh, awarded our second Member's Choice Award to the Miracle League of Harper County. All right. So the Member's Choice Award, what is that? Yeah, so um, this is an award uh, that's distinct from our uh, normal grant cycle. And it's, it's basically, it came out of the concept of, you know, we have the ability to uh, allow the members to choose the grantee in this particular, have, a, have a, a member actually nominate a charity of their choice. And then in turn, when the, those members nominate that charity of their choice, we do a, a video of why that charity should be chosen. And this year we had uh, three different uh, members, uh, you know, uh, put up, you know, and offer, you know, three different charities. Our members then get a chance to vote and listen to the videos. And then, you know, the one with the largest votes actually, uh, you know, gets selected. Um, and, and so the, the genesis of this was, you know, when we started with the community foundation, um, when our members, you know, the founding members, we have 16 founding members, when they started the organization, they were very keen on setting up a, you know, legacy fund, um, we mm -hmm. also call it the endowed fund, uh, to be able to sustain our giving over the years, uh, to ensure that there's always money to give. And so, um, we still have our endowed fund and currently, as of our last report, uh, it was over one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars that we have in that endowed fund that's held by the wow. foundation. Um, and uh, two years ago was our first year when it actually exceeded one hundred thousand dollars. And that's when the threshold that was set to be able to actually disperse from that. So uh, the disbursement really the, the amount is is really decided by the community foundation. Um, the last couple the last two were in the four to five thousand dollar range. Uh, it, which is typical, you know, it, you know, our grant limit uh, for normal grantees is $5,000 as well. And you and guys so we're started... Spending the earning, we're spending the earnings, not the principal on that. Right. And you guys were... You said you started, what, 2012? No, 2010, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So from 2010 to now, you've been able to raise over 100... What was it? 150? 159,000. And that's just in our endowed fund. Uh, if you look at uh, what we've given over the last 11 years, um, we've given over $450,000. And that's inclusive Whoa. of the members Choice Awards as well. Wow. Yeah. How in that short, because you think about it, that's not a lot. That's not a long time to raise that much money. Right. Yeah. So what's the secret? How are you guys doing all this? <laughs> Welcoming your friends. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really it's a really simple concept. So all the members get together, um, and all we do is collect money and then grant money out. 
So everyone pays a membership fee, which is $550 a year, unless you're under age 35. If you're under age 35, it's $250 a year. We pull that money together and we grant it out. And so that's how we're able to um, have awarded $450,000 in grants. So we're pulling our money. Um, we call it the bathtub fund. We pull the money in the bathtub fund or in the grant fund. And then every year we grant it out to um, nonprofits that serve our community. Wait a minute. Now I'm confused. So if you're younger, the dues are less. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I'm going to get smacked probably for saying this the next time somebody sees me. But what if you're a senior like Monica? And <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Monica. I, mean, <laughs> I know where you're, know where you're going. <laughs> so, so are, I mean, shouldn't the deuce be less? So I know where you're going with this. Yeah. So the idea to have um, next generation or those members that are under age 35, the idea of their dues being a little bit less is that most of them are, um, and we have a flurry of um, new members in their 20s. Mm -hmm. and so they're getting started in their careers and they're establishing themselves. So we want to make, um, you know, we'd like to get those younger members in and, and to be able to sustain our um, giving circle over time. Um, and so for them, the, um, the dues is a little bit less, um, but we do make it easy on all of our members by offering um, an installment option to pay. So um, this is January. This is the best time to start your installment option because you can divide that payment um, over 12 months. Um, and it makes it about $45 a year if you were over age 35. And about twenty dollars and some change if you're um, under age thirty-five. So we try to make it easy for our members, and we have a pretty good retention rate. Um, so we we feel like, um, you know, we feel like um, it's working for our members. I was gonna say it's actually a great idea because you get the younger people in. They number one, once they see what you guys are doing, I'm sure they stay. Yeah, you know, people don't like to join an organization unless they're doing something. They, they they joined to give and they want to be giving, and and, and correct, was that Monica calling? Did she hear me? <laughs> no, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be a dead man. Uh, <clears throat> so what is what is your retention rate? You know, Last you know? year was about eighty nine percent. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and especially during COVID, that's pretty good. We had a really good year last year. We added 39 we members uh, last year as well. Wow. Yeah. How? Uh, you know, just by, again, uh, you know, strategically reaching out to friends, uh, you know, that aren't members of the circle, sharing the impact. Uh, you know, one of the things I think, you know, like I said before, is, you know, having the, uh, the grantees talk about the mm -hmm. impact of those grants. I think that's really, really powerful. Man, that's – so do you guys do any fundraisers besides asking the men to donate money? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do any fundraisers, yeah. Really? Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, so, and so we kind of – we pride ourselves on that, actually. So if you join the Women's Giving Circle, all you need to do is pay your membership. We're not going to ask you to sell pizzas or raffle tickets or um, or anything like that. And um, all we ask you amazing. to do is you know, make that one payment. Mm-hmm. So strictly, all the money raised is strictly from dues and donations. Correct. No fundraising. Yep. Wow. Who created this model? Because I think this is a model that other nonprofits need to start looking in, into. <laughs> well, uh, the genesis of the, the organization, and Kim, feel free to, to jump in since you've been obviously part of the organization for much longer. Uh, Jamie Klein, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. part of or was familiar with the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. So there are a number of uh, Women's Giving Circles right. in Maryland. And she was familiar with that and said, hey, I want to I want to create something uh, in Harford County. And so it really started with that simple idea. Uh, she reached out to Marlene Lieb and they put together a list of people to invite uh, to their house to get together and talk about this concept. And from there, uh, you know, by the end of 2010, I believe it was, they had 16 founding members that had paid their dues. Wow. Right. But the giving circle concept itself um, is an offshoot of a collective giving model that's in use actually across the world. Right. Um, and so 
Um, you know, it's different giving circles operate differently, but it's, it's the same idea of collective giving, of pooling your money to make a larger impact in your community. Right. If you look at... So, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. If you look at, um, you know, our current platform that we're on, Grapevine, uh, where our members can actually join and donate as well, um, if you look on there, there are a ton of different giving circles, not just women giving circles. There's, you know, you know others that are focused on a particular you know, religion or, you know, mm-hmm. cause, et cetera. Interesting. Huh. Now, do you guys go out and talk to other organ? I'm sure, like, Monica's probably had you come talk to her Lions Club, right? <laughs> She has not, <laughs> at least for my, in my, not recently, <laughs> not recently, but I mean, you go, you guys have gone out and talked to other organizations. Yep. Absolutely. Huh. I'm going to have to get you to come talk to mine now. What's your organization? Is that uh, I, I'm the Java Town Lions Club. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> that's, that's how. That's why Monica's always giving me a hard time because I'm president of Java Town. Okay, what, she's what Aberdeen, I believe. It's Aberdeen, okay. I, thought, I can't. Remember. Well, we're not geographically based, so I mean, right. we have women members who are um, like I'm a resident of Cecil County. Uh, Mm -hmm. We and we actually have a couple. We have a a member who doesn't even live in the state. So if you're a woman, doesn't matter where you live or what you do. Yeah, you can be a member of the Giving Circle. So it's really all about just wanting to give back to this particular community. So outside of the Women's Giving Circle, what is it that you guys actually do your careers and all? (laughs) Kim, go ahead. Why why is Donna uh, laughing at that? Mine's totally different because I am. (laughs) Because I am gleefully newly retired from the state of Maryland. Oh, well, um, congratulations. Where, um, yeah, so I was a grant administrator for 20 plus years. So I administered um, about $20 million. And so um, when I was approached to um, lead the Women's Giving Circle, actually, I was approached to be the, so before I was the chair of the Giving Circle, I was the chair of the grant committee, um, which, you know, is a pretty big lift because all we do mm-hmm. is give out grants of about totaling $50,000 a year. And so when I had a, a, a quote unquote interview to, um, you know, to step into that, that role, I was like, well, um, in my real job, I man, I managed $20 million. And they're like, okay, you're hired. You can be very easily do 50,000. So did they throw you into um, the so treasurer yeah, spot I, right away? So I, I haven't done that, but, okay. you know, <laughs> but you know, it could happen. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, so right now I'm retired. It's fantastic. So I'm able to do more for the giving circle. So Donna, what about you? Uh, what about you? So um, I actually uh, work for Northrop Grumman. Um, I'm an environmental health and safety manager uh, for Northrop Grumman. So my career is is totally different from uh, what I do for the women's giving circles. It, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Both are rewarding. I think uh, women's giving circle is much more rewarding, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> are, they, are they, they were out of, uh, was it? Glen Burnie or something, weren't they? Uh, we do. We used to have not a Glen Burnie, but definitely Martin State Airport. Uh, there, I remember Martin, there. yes. Um, but uh, we're primarily uh, well, we're all over, but uh, in the Maryland right. area, Linthicum area is, is one of our primary uh, areas, right by the airport. And Don is probably still. You probably still got another twenty years to retire. Uh, no, not quite twenty. I'll, I'll hit. <laughs> Uh, 25 years with Northrop Grumman uh, this year, actually. So. What? Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Man. So, what is, I guess, the long-term goal uh, for the Women's Giving Circle in Hartford County? Hmm. That is a good question. I mean, it, you know, that question came up. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. We were a little bit mm-hmm. late due to COVID. And, uh, you know, that was one of the questions uh, one of our speakers, you know, kind of you know, asked, you know, what's what's the future, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, one of my goals is to increase our diversity that we have. Um, and we've started to do that with, you know, hosting events, not necessarily in the Bel Air area, area where we've typically been doing that this past fall. We had one in Haberty Grace, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's one of the things uh, to broaden our membership and just to broaden our mm-hmm. reach. I mean, I think, you know, Ultimately, uh, this year, we will definitely uh, exceed over $500,000 worth of giving. Wow. Um, and and I, you know, for me, I think it's, it's really just building on that momentum to increase our membership and sustain as well and to make sure that you know, our members are having a, a worthwhile experience uh, as a member. 
Right. Well, you know, one way you could expand membership, the women's men given circle. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Just say. Or you could start or you could start a men's giving circle in America. You know what? Not a shot. <laughs> I would not do that. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> Believe it or not. See, Monica will probably, she could tell you. So with our Lions Club, we were more men than anything. Okay. And mm-hmm. when I became president, oh, my God, six years ago, seven years ago, whatever, we started rebuilding the club. We have more women in the club than we do men now. Mm-hmm. And it's because of the women that we're getting more done. <laughs> I, i'm go. serious <laughs> they keep us in line <laughs> tell everybody the website so the men and women can go there and donate Ooh, this is a good it's point. harfordwomengiving.org wait a minute donna were you about to say that's a hard question it is because i always google it myself <laughs> <laughs> No, I know that one. It's HarfordWomenGiving.org. She redeemed herself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have you anything? There, what, what's that? There's a, there's a, if you go to the website, there's a tab for joining or renewing your membership. And then mm-hmm. there's a separate tab for donating. Um, so as we said, that we'll take a donation in any amount at any time from anyone. Um, but women, um, if you're interested in joining, um, you need to join. And um, we just ask that women pay their um, their dues once a year at any time during the year. When I was looking at the picture on the website, there's a lot of people there I recognize. And you have a lot of women in there from a lot of great organizations that I want to say go out, even where they work at, they go out and give 110%. And I'm sure they're the same way with the Women's Giving Circle. Absolutely. Well, I think that's one of, you know, again, I think that's one of the, the, the draws of the giving circle is because all we really ask of members is to write that check or make that credit card payment. We Meetings are optional. Participation in committees are is optional. We don't have like those fundraisers and raffle tickets kind of thing. So mm-hmm. the women know that they can pull their money here. It goes to a good cause and they can be part of something that isn't going to require um, you know, additional commitments because we know that people are busy, you know, and so we have, um, you know, all different, um, you know, we have all different levels of participation according to people's schedule and their personal responsibilities. Right. Wait, wait do I see Patrice in that photo? <laughs> yeah, she's still a member. And that, that means it's an old photo. I think the photo was maybe about four years old. It was from one of our May meetings okay. where we... Met, met meant to vote on grants, so right. Yeah, because I see Patrice. Is that San, uh, Sandra? It's like Osborne. Romper room. I see Patrice, and I see yeah, uh, yeah. I, see Sally, <laughs> yeah I was gonna say Miss Sally. <laughs> I couldn't remember her name for a minute. Jeez. And I, and I see Jody, and I see. <laughs> what was that? Oh, Romper Room. It was. Yeah, that's what it was. I had to think for a minute yeah. there. God, now I'm showing my age. What I would like to do when everything, of course, when it's warmer out too, um, but when everything starts to settle down, if we could get like a, a, maybe like five of you and just sit around and do like a round table discussion about it because I, I know there's a lot we didn't go over. Or, or actually, better yet, do a big round table and maybe even pull in some of the grantees, the people that have won awards and everything. Yep. Um, good old testimonials. Oh, look at that. You could put it on the website. Funny that you say that, Rich, because uh, I think that's a great idea. We, um, For our 10th anniversary, um, you know, we had a very active committee, and one of the committee members came up with the idea. In fact, it was uh, Karen Blanford with uh, Habitat for Humanity Susquehanna. Mm-hmm. She, you know, she suggested that we have the grantees, you know, give, you know, a short little testimonial about the impact. And so uh, we had, you know, an individual uh, that went ahead and pulled all of that together and, you know, uh, you know, basically you know, created a 10 minute video 
um, that we have of the impact of those grants. That's awesome. Donna Kim, I want to thank you both so much and thank you for everything you guys are doing and helping with all these other, you know, nonprofits and, you know, best of luck to you both. And I cannot wait to see where, you know, the women's given circle is given out over a million dollars every year. Yeah. If you would like to donate to the Women's Giving Circle of Hartford County, go to HartfordWomenGiving.org. Again, that's HartfordWomenGiving.org. And, of course, that will be in the show notes as well. And for the podcast that I want to recommend for this episode, if you get a chance, you got to listen to this. It's Philanthropy United. And this is a podcast, two young ladies that actually talk about, well, nonprofits and everything. So here's the way it reads their description. Their mission is to help nonprofits tell their unique impact stories and expand their network of donors. With the current media focusing on a negative, we want to bring positivity to our community. So you get a chance, check it out. Again, I'll have them listed below too, but it's called Philanthropy United. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe and thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Hartford, and Cecil Counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410 410- 6387021 experience the excellence and community impact for yourself tar hill construction group building excellence one roof at a time